Hi, first graders, it is Teacher Cooper. Today I am going to teach you a new math game. It is called Bowl Effect. It looks like that. Bowl Effect. And the reason it's called Bowl Effect is because it has some things in common with bowling. Now, bowling is a game that you play um, at a great big building called a bowling alley. And I have some pictures to show you. So here's a girl who's at a bowling alley. And at the bowling alley, there are lots of these lanes, these long, um, these long like pieces of floor are called lanes. And when you bowl, you roll a big heavy ball down your lane and you are trying to knock over the pins that are these white things at the very end of your lane. And here's a picture of a ball that is knocking over those pins. Now, when you go bowling, you have two chances to knock over all 10 pins. If you knock over all 10 pins on your first roll, when it's your turn, that's called a strike. So a strike is when you knock down 10 pins in one roll. If you don't knock down 10 pins in one roll, you have another roll to try to knock down whatever's left. And if you knock down the rest of the pins, so you knock down all 10 pins in two rolls, that is called a spare. So a spare is when you knock down all 10 pins in two rolls. Um, before you roll your ball, the pins are set up like this. So you can see that in the very front, there's one pin. And then in the next row, there are two pins. In the next row, there are three pins. And finally, in the back row, there are four pins. So if we count all of these up, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there are 10 pins, and this is what they look like before you roll your ball to try to get a strike or a spare. All right, that's all important information to know before we play this game. Now, let's get started. To play this game, you need a piece of paper, a marker or a pencil or a pen or whatever you have to write with, a dice, the numbers one through six, so one, two, three, four, five, and six on little pieces of paper. I made two of each, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. And then you need 10 objects. And I have these counters that we use at school, but anything would work. Even I found some paper clips, 10 paper clips would be fine. 10 pennies would also work well. To begin this game, you need to make your game board. And the first thing you do is draw your bowling pins. So you remember, this is what bowling pins look like when they're set up. I am going to draw circles to represent each of the pins. So there are four pins in the back. In the next row, there are three, and they look like this. They kind of set in between the ones behind them. The next row has two, and that front row has one pin. I am going to write the numbers one through 10 in these pins. And then the last thing I'm going to do after I write these numbers is draw three squares below my pins. The way that I knock down my pins is by writing number sentences that equal the numbers on the pins. But you can only use three numbers at a time. So I'm going to roll my die to figure out what my numbers are. Ooh, I rolled a six. So one number I can use in my number sentences is six. A four. And a six. 
oh, so this is why I made two of each number. Because, of course, there's a chance you might roll the same number three times, and then you would have to make a third one. But I thought probably that wouldn't happen. So I made two, and now I have two sixes. All right, so now my job is to write number sentences using only these three numbers. And I am going to try to write number sentences to knock down all of these pins. And if I can do that with these three numbers, then I get a strike. I'm going to pull over my math journal and I'm going to write my equations in my math journal. So right away, I see that six plus four is 10. I know that right away. That's a, a fact I know right away. So I'm going to write six plus four is the same as 10. And because I wrote a number sentence that equals 10, that means that I get to knock down that pin. Now I am going to try to write other number sentences that equal other numbers on these pins. So let's see. Four plus six. Oh, I know that four plus six is the same as six plus four. So that's not going to give me a new number. That still equals 10. What about six plus six? Oh, that's a doubles fact. I know that in a snap. 6 plus 6 is the same as 12. Ooh, there's not a 12 here, so that doesn't help me knock down any pins. What about subtraction equations? How about 6 minus 4? I know that 6 minus 4 is the same as 2. So that means that I get to knock down number 2. Now, Hmm, six minus four again, that gives me the same number. If I add up all three of these numbers, I know that's gonna be above 10 because six plus six is 12. And if I add four more, oh my goodness, that's 16. Hmm, so first graders, I think in this round, I only got to knock down two pins. So that means I don't have a strike, but I can still try for a spare. So to get a spare, I am going to roll my dice again and get three new numbers. So I took away my first three numbers. I still have two and 10 knocked down, but now I'm gonna roll three new numbers and try to write number sentences to knock down the rest of my pins. So let's see what I get this time, a three, five and a six. All right, so now I'm gonna start on my number sentences and see what I get to knock down. Three plus five, let me write that one. All right, three plus five equals eight. Great, that means that I get to knock down eight. That's a new one. Hmm, how about three plus six? Ooh, three plus six, that's the same as nine. Excellent, I also get to knock down nine. Mm, let's see, five plus six. Oh, that's a near double. I know that five plus five is 10. So five plus six equals 11. Oh, there's no 11 on the pin, so I don't get to knock anything down there. Let me try some subtraction equations. Six minus five. Six minus five is the same as one. Great, I get to knock down my one. How about six minus three? Oh, three is half of six. So I know what's left over is three. Six minus three is the same as three. Look at that, I got to knock over my three. Now I can write some subtraction equations with five. How about five minus three? Five 
5 minus 3 is the same as 2. Oh, I already knocked over 2, so that doesn't help me. Hmm. Can I write any more number sentences that might help me knock down 7, 4, 5, or 6? Well, I know sometimes in class we ask this question. Is 5 the same as 5? It is. I think that's a true number sentence that only uses that number. So I am going to knock down 5. Oh, do I get to do the same thing with 6? Six? 6 equals 6. That's true. So I'm going to knock down 6. Now I still have seven and four. Is there anything I can do with these three numbers to knock down seven and four? Well, I don't think so, which means that I didn't get a strike and this time I also didn't get a spare. So I'm going to try again. I am going to clear off my board set my pins back up and <clears throat> I'm going to take another turn and see if this time I can get a strike. If I were playing with a partner, it would be time now for my partner to take their turn. One last note, first grade, if you have um, a plastic sleeve, like the kind we use at school for math games so that we can write on them and erase, you could do that instead of using counters and these uh, paper numbers. When you roll, you could just write your numbers right on the, um, on the plastic. And when you knock down pins, you can put X's through them and then, when you're done, erase and you can use it again. I hope that you have fun playing bowl effect. When you play, make sure you take pictures of your board and your great math work and upload it on Seesaw so that I can see if you got a strike.